thing is I found out that I'm 3% Jedi which is why I always carry one of these how awesome is that <laughs> Good evening, and uh, welcome to our Holden Evening Worship and apparently my birthday celebration. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you, Deb and Jaren, for that slideshow. That was very wonderful. Um, yeah, I'm definitely getting older, <laughs> and I feel older. Uh, but yeah, again, thank you all for the birthday cards, the birthday wishes, and uh, just for being you and the community here. So, okay. With that being said, uh, here is our Holden evening worship. Jesus Christ, you're the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face. Oh. 
Lord of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms the weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, set us free and make us God be with you all. And also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your presence are the light of our pathways. And you are the light and life of all
Tonight's reading is from the Holy Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 21 through 24. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you, anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, or you fool, is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says you fool will be the danger, in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, last week I talked about how kind of the, the theme for this Lenten season is abide. And so I actually got the definition here just to make sure everybody's on the same page when we talk about abide and abiding in God's love. So according to Webster, to abide is to, has six different <laughs> meanings. So that's why I want to make sure we get the right one. They all kind of apply, but uh, first is to bear patiently or tolerate, to endure without yielding, to withstand, to wait for, await, or to accept without objection. And there's kind of a couple of different little ones, say, to remain stable or fixed in a state, to continue in a place. So when we talk about abiding, when we read that passage from John about abiding in God's love, it's kind of about being in that place, being in that space, kind of accepting that uh, being held in God's love. So again, just sometimes when you use words, people just don't really need to make sure you define what you're saying. <clears throat> but in today's gospel, we have an interesting, this is actually from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, an interesting passage that we, you know, come across every, every few years, talk about maybe you've heard, you know, some sermons on this one. And I don't know, today, this week, it struck me that this was an important one to talk about. Because in this gospel, Jesus obviously, he addresses the Ten Commandments. He said, you've heard it said, do not murder. And he goes on to say, but I tell you, and kind of expands on that. That's what the rabbis did. Okay, they were asked a question or presented with kind of a topic, and then they would say what the, the basic was, and then kind of launch into an interpretation. This is kind of how they taught people, how they expanded on people's knowledge of, okay, it says do not murder, but it means so much more than that, because... You know, it, you, somebody can justify, say, well, I, I haven't killed anybody. But with Jesus' explanation, he's like, it's so much just as important to, to care about others, to not speak words of, of hatred or anger at anyone. Now, I know we all get angry. Like, that happens. You know, I'm sure, no, I'm not sure. I have. I have gotten angry and said things to people, hurtful things. I'm guessing that we all have at different points in our life. But I know, at least from my perspective and the people who are in my life, when those angry words come up or when that anger at somebody happens, you talk about it. You apologize for what's taken place, and you reconcile. You move on. That's what Jesus is really addressing here. When he says, leave your gift, or if your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front and go be reconciled to your brother, that would have never happened. Because nobody would have left. Like this, the temple offering area was this hugely busy, insane place. Like nobody would have left 
their two doves and gone and straightened something out before coming back. It's, it's about a mindset. It's about kind of a frame of reference. Are you reconciled to others in your life? Or are there people who have something against you? Have you done something to somebody and haven't made it right yet? Jesus is like, it's so important how we treat each other. Do not murder. That's just the very basic form of love your neighbor as yourself. Like that's the ultimate kind of don't kill anybody, but also don't be mean. Don't, don't just that. There's so much more that expands upon that command. But what's really interesting, and I don't know if I just never noticed this before, or or if it's just a recent development. But it seems like we've gotten to a place where people feel that it's justified to be in relationship with somebody that is a hate-filled kind of stance. Or they look at somebody and there's only hatred or scorn or disgust or contempt and that people are fine just existing in that. There's not, there, there's not an apology. There's not an effort at reconciliation. Somebody just drops some line or, or, or some phrase or, or, or says something to somebody else. And there's no repentance. There's no confession. There's no reconciliation. And it seems like that's happening more and more. Uh, it's, it's making the world worse this idea that we can just say whatever we want to somebody and not apologize because well it's it's dehumanizing in a certain way and i don't know why that that crept up this week but when we talk about abiding it's about being in right relationship with god and with each other even if that other is somebody you can't stand <laughs> <laughs> like you're still asked to not go out there and antagonize and attack and, and do these things, even if you don't like somebody. You just don't say anything. That's how it used to be, right? If you, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Apparently, so now if, if you can't say anything nice, you should say it on Twitter or something like that. Like that's kind of our, our, our mode now. And I don't know where it came from, but we've got <coughs> to be better. And it just starts with the basic relationships in our lives. How do we treat people we don't like? How do we treat people that we disagree with? I mean, I've seen Packers and Vikings fans coexist in the same house. It can happen. Jesus teaching, this is not hard. This is not, it's not difficult to care about each other. It's not hard to say, I'm sorry, please forgive me, I spoke in anger, or I, I did something that hurt you. That's not that difficult to do. So not, we're human. We make mistakes. Jesus says, reconcile. Don't let those mistakes just sit there. It's funny, in Bible study this morning, we kind of were talking about this, and <laughs> we were in conversations like, this is, this is, this is easy stuff. Like, and if, and if everybody did this, the world would be an amazing place. Just the simple act of not speaking out in anger to somebody. And if you do, reconciling. So simple. So let's do it. <laughs> and I trust all of you are. But let's tell others to do it too. Again, we abide in God's love by loving, being respectful to each other. Amen. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth, to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel
angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here, and bless me all my life through. Great and mighty are you, O Holy One, strong is your kindness ever. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come, come, your will will be done done on earth earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our our sins as we forgive forgive those who sin against us. us. Save us from the time time of trial and and deliver us from evil. evil. For the the kingdom kingdom, and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to God. 